It's definitely a lot easier to be friends when you're not competing against each other. There was never a time in my career where I'm like, I hope Dave doesn't win. Because a lot of times he was on the other side of the bracket and I was like, we gotta wrestle again. Our life was built around wrestling. I remember telling him, you know, he's gonna go 165 this year. And I was hyped to, to go out there and just prove that David wouldn't just tech me or pin me. The drama of the whole thing was just intense. I would never be the wrestler I am today without Kyle. It's the adversity, it's the times that I didn't win. Those are like the building blocks of a, a pretty cool relationship and you know, even a cool rivalry. Heading over to the M2 Training Center. It's about uh, it's about a 20 minute drive from where I live here in Park Forest. Kyle Dake just drove down last night with his wife. Um, we just got back from San Diego for two weeks having a training camp for the, getting ready for the World Championships. This year we've probably gotten together. This is probably our, I'd say, maybe 10th or 11th time that we've been able to get together and train. We've, you know, by, by the end of this year, we've had eight training camps getting ready for the World Championships. Um, I've gone up to Cornell. He's come down here a couple of times. So I came down to, to get a couple of days of training here at State College with Dave Taylor. We're probably just gonna spar for a while. We just had a pretty grueling camp. I think it's gonna be a lot of going and then I'm like, what'd you do there? Do that again. What'd you do there? Do that again. It's just fun, fun to be around just because we always bounce ideas off each other and um, wrestle in positions that most people don't wrestle in. If you watch our style of wrestling, we always get in scrambles and you know, there's different situations that might happen once in a year. And you know, we play around in those situations so that we can score every time we're there. Dave? What's up, Kyle? How you doing, brother? Good seeing you. Good to see you, too. Yeah. Good trip? Yeah, good trip. Place looks good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, That's sweet. Right. Big gulps. Big gulps. See you later, then. Speedy. Sounds speedy. Speedy. Right. What'd you guys just see? <laughs> Donuts? No, I didn't have a donut. Gluten-free. Did you get that slate? Or I did not. Okay. Gosh, I thought I did it perfectly. Interview take one. Oh, I'm Big baller brand. Second sticks. Got it? Got it back up. Ready? Rock and roll. All right, guys. Um, we'll just start real, real basic. How did you guys first meet each other? Dave hey. kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> when was the first time I wrestled? Fargo? I feel like we wrestled at like Ohio Tournament Champions once. I know. We wrestled Ohio Straight up decimated me. Yeah. It wasn't even close. I mean, pretty sure I cried afterward, that's for sure. <laughs> The era that we grew up in, it was, you know, like myself, Logan Sieber, we were pretty much always on teams together or competitive, but we were always with different weight classes. And I think early, Kyle was always one of the two. Yeah. You know, so we, we grew up wrestling each other. I, mean, I know we wrestled in Fargo in eighth grade. Um, before that, Ohio Tournament Champions. Schoolboy duels. I know you Logan wrestled. kicked the out of me in schoolboy <laughs> duels, too. I just remember, like, standing in the fourth place and then Dave with his big long brackets or with his big goofy ears on top of the podium every time. You know, it just, it's just, you know, we're wrestling. There's not many youth wrestlers that are good, young, and continue to be good later in life. And my dad was a proud dad. Our life was built around wrestling. You know, so I, I did have a lot of success younger. When did you guys develop a relationship and, and start training with each other and how did that come about? So it was our eighth grade year. I'll take this one. <laughs> our eighth grade year, Dave kicked my butt at Fargo. I headlocked him, had him pinned, he hooked my leg, and Greco turned me. Should have won the match. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. But after that, my mom and <coughs> his dad were in the stands. My mom's just like the friendliest person of all time, so she'll talk to anybody. I think Mr. Taylor was like, hey, why don't you come down when you're out in Ohio? We're not that far, it's only a couple hour drive. So then the next year, I ended up driving down to St. Parish Graham and working out with those guys. And that's kind of how it all started. 
I just remember being downstairs in the David Taylor Shrine. How many times did you win Tulsa? I don't know, I think like five, four or five times. And you get that like big, big old eagle, eagle thing. Yeah. And he had them all lined up and then he had, you know, all of these helmets and trophies from tournament champions and like, all these, what was the Reno tournament too? You got a big the globe, one? Like yeah. the globe, that was, that was cool. You just had everything. And then, you know, I had like a couple medals in my, in my place from local tournaments. And you know, my Talladega Shrine was nowhere near the, <laughs> as cool as days. So we were watching Talladega Nights downstairs and we just thought it was hilarious. We were, I mean, we were pretty young, so we, we kind of got a lot of the humor, but not all of it. Yeah, that's kind of how everything started. Yeah. Talladega Nights. I was a magic man, he was El Diablo. His, he was Magic Man, and I was El Diablo, but then mine didn't stick. And then, well, you didn't have the claws. Yeah, I didn't have, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, fighting chick with the claws. Yeah. You didn't have the claws. No. So then Dave became Magic Man. <laughs> now you see me? Now you don't. Well, typically when I wrestle, I really think about search and destroy, you know? So, um, but no, I think, I actually talked about, I like to get a little stuff on in our parterre. You know, we didn't really cover a lot in camp last week. Um, I think uh, I would like to do a little bit of wrestling there, but I think ultimately just, just playing in positions, you know, just learning as we get through, we'll kind of just get through a couple positions. I think that's the neat thing in the end, but you have to, that's just, just part one. That's just part one. Circle, create an angle. Um, I think I leave my heel on the ground. Let me do this. I'm gonna grab it, but even so, it's like you got me off. So now it's if I do this, space. my foot's still kind of mobile, but here changes it. Oh. Guttural Sounds of Wrestling compilation brought to you by Rob the Sound Guy. <laughs> This is what you go, why you go under because you're strong side? Yeah, because I'm, I'm not as threatened. Like this, I can, you know, now I'm 100%, right? Uh -huh. The guy has really good gut to the right, I'll go 100%. Is this your good side? I don't think either one's that good. Okay. 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 You know, I really, I use Dave and, and guys on the national team as like test. You know, how can my technique improve? And I get it the first time, you know, maybe I don't get it the second time. So I go back to the drawing board or just like what we were doing, just talking about the position. So, you know, not putting myself in, in those crazy scramble positions, you know, will increase my longevity, but also just make sure that I'm working on the things I need to work on. Specifically with Kyle, he's just got great defense. So, you know, just understanding that getting your hands locked is just part of the battle. You know, I think for a long time I was trying to just like get one shot. But against the best guys in the world, one shot doesn't do it. It's two or three or four. When you get to like a certain level, you kind of like know the positions that you're trying to get into and you kind of both just get there. Like I was just working on trying to get on the left side and he was trying to play with like not letting me score in that position. So we kept going and just, you know, trying to figure those things out. Ultimately what you gain confidence in practice and whatever you're most confident you're doing in competition. So that's a position that I get in a lot. So the more confidence I can get finishing different ways, you know, the higher percentage chance I can finish, you know, when it really matters. So that's like what is really good about wrestling with him is without even communicating and saying, hey, let's play here, we can just get there and just start playing that over and over again. It's a lot of wrestling in a short period of time. You gotta condition your body to be able to wrestle a lot in a lot of positions if you're gonna shoot a lot. I get scored on a lot. But every time I get scored on, I learn. So that's good. When I visit Cornell, you know, looking at it was one of the schools at the time that I was looking into, we had talked about being on the same team together mm -hmm. and stuff. 
he had pretty much already set his mind to Iowa State, and he just he knew right away that he kind of wanted to wrestle for Kale. He's like, you should come out to Iowa State. And I was like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. And Kale never called me, um, you know, just because I don't. He had Dave. They probably thought we were going to be the same way. The whole the whole thing happened with Kale leaving and going to Penn State and bringing Dave with him. Again, tried to say, man, you should come down. I'm like, nah, you know, I'm I'm good up here, and you know, I'm 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 ready to ready to jump into Cornell and, and, and go full time. I mean, I don't. I, I knew Kyle was good, but I didn't think that he was gonna have the you know that that freshman year that he had. You know, it was just like following the results. You know, and be like, wow, he's being being good guys. And then the one that I remember was when you you lost close at the at Vegas to um, Reese or Bailey. Bailey. Well, both. Yeah. Well, both are close, yeah. right? And I'm like, wow, you know, these guys are established guys. Like, he really is, like, right in the mix. I mean, my dad and I were sitting together. I mean, I remember just, as he was going through the tournament, like, how excited I was for him to do well. And when he won in the finals, I, like, texted him, and we, like, met up in the hallway. And I gave him, like, a big hug and congratulated him, you know? Just the transition of wrestling through his freshman year. Having two losses, right? Just yeah, those two guys. And to be a national champ is like incredible. You know, it really gives me chills to think about that. You know, like where we were as, as seniors, and then he kind of set a standard of like true freshmen coming in and believing. Like I didn't, as true freshman, I believed I was in red shirt. That was part of my plan. I didn't think anything different. I'm in red shirt, and then I'll start my career. And there wasn't really a trend of coming in as true freshman wrestling. I mean, he started that. And again, there it is. Proud Dick with the ball. Yeah, after that first one, you know, it's kind of like Dave was trying to outdo me. His sophomore year, he just was like killing everybody. I have beat Kyle my whole life, and if Kyle's like doing this as a freshman, then yeah, I definitely could do this as a freshman, you know? That's David Taylor, he's undefeated. I had to fight tooth and nail for a lot of stuff I did. And you know, he'd take somebody down, ride him a little bit, get a really easy turn. I'm like, how is he turning this guy? This guy's like, Supposed to be really good, and he's just making him look like a JV wrestler. Like, what's going on? Going through the NCAA tournament, I knew how hard it was for me my, my freshman year and my sophomore year. Because I'm like, I won. Like, this is sweet. Like, that's awesome. And it was like two days where I was just like gorging myself with food because I had been cutting so, so much weight. I was getting better but I just had to build so much toughness to forget about all the pain that I was going through through cutting all that weight. I needed a break. So I needed to break off the mat and I was just in the weight room constantly. And then I got too big and it was the same story again my sophomore year. I was like, I need, you know, I'm going up again next year. And it was around the same time that I found out Dave was going up. You could just tell the amount of weight he was cutting. I wasn't cutting that much weight. I mean, he was cutting a lot of weight. Those are like the building blocks of a, a pretty cool relationship and you know, even a cool rivalry. Just keeping you know, my focus on the next match at a time and going out and doing what I do best, and that's just wrestling hard for seven minutes, no matter who it is. first time that there was ever a discussion of like are we gonna are we on the same path to wrestle was just him being junior when he was third and I was a sophomore winning and I won my first that year that next year was when it was kind of like okay well what are these guys gonna wrestle freestyle what weight are they gonna go and there really there was really one, only the option right yeah. hey, we're both gonna wrestle 163 I didn't go into the trials of 2012 believing I was gonna be Olympic champion you know and I think that was and I really understood for the first time like Senior level is no joke. You know, going into to 2012, you know, I had won my third national title, and you know, going into that tournament, you know, after wrestling David, I was hyped to to go out there and you know, kind of just prove that David wouldn't just tech me or pin me. And I always been really good leg defense, really flexible, um, strong in that position. I could move my my one foot well. I could hop forever. 
he was running, running, running. I changed direction and, you know, was able to drop my level, pick his ankle, and, you know, just kind of caught him off guard a little bit. My mentality, you know, it's like, well, I, I dominated matches and then thinking I was just kind of kind of go in and just do that and realizing that, you know, this is not the same Kyle that I wrestled in the past, you know. But it's just kind of crazy, a match like that, right, of that, like, magnitude and significance to just happen on, like, the backside of a bracket where there's, like, really no one there, right? Good for me. Luckily, there wasn't a lot of people there. You know, after that first, first match, he comes back. He's like, I'm going to get you next time. If I had Kyle's leg up in the air, you know, I'd probably on the outside, right? You know, Either one, right? really. And it's when, it's, you know, this leg rolls forward, and you're like, yeah. It's like when you... So it's like it's when, when you drop down, my weight... So usually my weight is on my... Trying to get my front foot down. And then when he's coming in, I'll shift my weight back low, load it up here, and now I use that, use this loading to drive back this way and pick his legs up. And I see it, I mean, in freestyle, you know, it's like when the guy's trying to push you out, so, oh, you yeah. know, if I have Kyle's leg in the end, you gotta be really, I mean, just, you know, when you're going, you just, because you kind of forget about your technique sometimes when you're pushing a guy out of bounds. I mean, you you're see just thinking, it so close, right? You're just thinking, oh, I'm just gonna run this guy out of bounds, and all of a sudden you start, yeah. And then you pick, start in that hole. Scramble situation happens. You know, just going into that all-star match, I remember getting into it, but also at the same time, you know, it was in the back of my mind, you know, I did just get like, kind of like thrown in my back and pinned, you know, like, okay, I need to be prepared. And, and into that match, um, you know, I think we both wrestled conservative in that match. You know, we, we weren't letting it rip by any means. I'd say probably not many matches we ever wrestled outside of the practice room where we ever probably let it rip. You know, to the capability of what we are both capable of, you know, outside of in practice, I don't think we've probably ever done that in an actual match, but that one specifically, and you know, it goes into like overtime, double overtime, but I had never been in a double overtime match. The strategy of like having to hold someone down for 30 seconds or getting off the bottom, like there just wasn't like, I hadn't been there before. You know, we practice it in practice, but I remember, even in practice, I was like, I'm never gonna be here. There's, I just don't ever foresee a match where it's like, it's gonna be tied, you know, going into double overtime. I just didn't really believe that. Dig has that stall warning in his pocket. We'll go to OT 1-1. And Taylor might try and push pace here a little bit. All of a sudden you had this like fire in your eye and you were coming hard and I was like, oh God, here we go. Backing away, you know, circling, circling, circling. I think I get pushed out of bounds, and we come back. Same thing. It's all in 30 seconds. Backing away, backing away. Circle, circle, circle. So it was, it was close. Kyle Dude, Lake, gonna, gonna win. Who won in double overtime? Your winner from Cornell, Kyle Dake. And you can see the frustration on David Taylor's face. You know, and I, I remember coming off that match. I, I was upset, definitely upset that I lost. I'm like, okay, well now I'm not behind like I was, you know, in that Olympic trials thing. I remember telling, you know, Coach Casey, Coach Caleb, I'm like, he's gonna go 165 this year. You know, it's like, well, at that point, you know, knowing him and his competitiveness, like, he's gonna go 165. You know, it's just, it's just a lot, the opportunity to go 165, now knowing that he's beat me twice, like, that's, that's something that's gonna happen. That year, uh, you know, wrestling, at the All-Star match. Wrestling the Southern Scuffle, which of all the matches that we wrestled, the Southern Scuffle match is by far like the one that just like eats at me more than anyone. The one we've all been waiting for, Dave Taylor, part two. You know, we, got, we get in that flurry right away. And that was the biggest thing when wrestling Kai was like, I gotta find a way to make the flurries happen more often. You know, I think I was really careless in my positioning for most of my career. And I could get away with it. It's 99.9% .9 of the guys. You know, leg slipping was always what I was the best at. Getting a guy to throw a leg in and reversing him. In that match, a leg slipped him, reversed him, and just, and we got, we were just a lot of scrambles, but I got a lot of riding time. Kind of in danger, but he's over by the edge of the mat. Two point reversal, David Taylor! And they move towards the edge. And they go reversal on that! You, you got a reversal going out of bounds, and obviously I'm like, well, that's, that stinks. But still, I had like a lot of time to get off the bottom to win that match. And, Five seconds to go, Taylor rolls through! They gave it up! And they say no points! No points! Unbelievable, man! 
afterwards you know, in the back of the Southern Scuffle hallway with Cody and just being like, like slamming my head against the brick wall. And I remember saying this for specific words. I'm like, I had that match in my hands and I blew it. Everything that match was perfect. You know, like not perfect in the match, but the situation that I was in, just like how I lost that match still hurts. Uh, I mean, his leg slip basically is guy throws a leg in. And uh, I mean, the easiest way is you're just gonna shimmy. And as you shimmy, you swim. So I'm gonna shimmy, I'm gonna drop my inside elbow. And guys are gonna be forced to hang on over here and then we swim. So I'm gonna shimmy, drop their hips. And then as I swim my arm, I swim and I retreat. And that's pretty much, that's a pretty basic leg slip. Um, I think you're seeing it more and more. Collegiately, it's popular, but starting to see it more internationally, you know. Um, it's from the quad pod position. Like quad when you pod, get stuck yeah. In there. Oh, yeah. And you know, guy, instead of you know just going down into into basic defense, guys is, are stepping behind that leg, or they're just stepping into the leg, throwing it in. Guys will go real hard for a gut wrench. That's when you just go knee down, pick it up. So it did, it head in, especially into the NCAA match. Did you know he was doing that? Or would, is that oh yeah. The, the tendency of his? Oh yeah. I knew that there was a lot riding on it. I had, you know, there's camera crews coming from everywhere. You know, everyone was following me and, and wanting to, to see if I could do it. You know, be the first one since Kale to do it. And, and mine was something special simply because it was at a different weight class. But more importantly, I was going up against one of the best that ever step on the mat. drama of the whole thing was just intense. It was, it was kind of a, it was such a unique situation because I was coming off of one of the most dominant collegiate seasons of all time, winning a Hodge Trophy. I mean, losing a lot of confidence and getting beat at the Olympic Trials, but then gaining confidence at the All-Star Match, and then gaining more confidence at the Southern Scuffle, but the meanwhile, continually being the underdog. All the TV cameras were following Kyle, and I'm just going out. I had pinned four guys in a row, and he, he had close matches. I had visualized how the match was going to start in my mind so many times go out, pop in the shoulder, ankle pick, get the first takedown. And going out and doing it, like I had envisioned it, you know, and uh, getting the takedown, and then it was like, what's next? Because I hadn't thought about what's next. Never one time that I visualized what was next. From that moment, I just got, like the match went on, I just started getting tired and more tired. I go into every single match thinking, okay, I'm up 2-0 right now. I'm gonna get the riding time and I'm gonna get out. Even if I get taken down, I get back out, I'm up 3-2. Even if I get taken down again, it's 4-4 and we're going into overtime and I'm way better on the mat, I can, you know, I'm gonna win this. So I knew I could give up two takedowns and still win the match. And, you know, we get in that scramble, we go out of bounds, come back in, we get another scramble. He shoots a low single and gets a takedown with a short time left. And it kind of had neutralized the momentum that I had. And uh, now it's three to two. Basically, it's, it's up to me at the end to, uh, you know, to get the, you know, I go down in a good position. I just keep thinking, okay, I'm gonna reverse him. I'm gonna reverse him. I'm gonna get him to throw his leg in. And I think in my mind, I'm like, I'd rather get a reversal you know, the thing I have to get an escape and go get a takedown. And I wasted too much time. And it's amazing, like, how the discipline that he had to not throw his leg in. Because, like, that was what he did, like, every time. So I, I had a lot of confidence, like, that I was going to be able to get that position. How, he's never going to be resist to not throw his leg in because he does it so often. And these scrambles, like, it's just your instinct kicks in. Like, you just, it just kicks in. I did make a huge adjustment. I, you know, I didn't throw legs in anymore. The back half of that year, it was like, you have to just keep your hips on top. I don't care if you have a leg in, just keep your hips on top. You can't get shifted side to side. So that match, I'm just like, on my toes the whole time. I got to my feet, got the escape, and then now it's just short time left. We're panicking to get the takedown. We like shoot, and I get to his leg, and we're going out of bounds, and like I just can't 
you know, because I counted in the splits, and I, and I get on the takedown looking up, and there's like one second left on my clock. And I remember it just at that moment, walking back, and just, like, real, I just, it just it hit, you know, the match is over. I don't have a chance. I really, I just want to go out and wrestle and, and prove that I was one of the best to ever step on the mat. That's what I wanted to prove. And the only way I could prove that was to take on one of the best. Because it would have been what ifs. Had I gone 57 and not wrestled Dave that entire year, you know, Dave would have gone on to be the most dominant. He would have been a three-time Hodge Trophy winner for sure. He would have, you know, just decimated everybody. And they were like, oh yeah, Kyle's good. You know, four-time NCAA champion, he's good. But he never really tested himself against the best of his era. To go up and wrestle against me, you know, says a lot about his character, right? I mean, that match wasn't an easy match to win. So, like, can you show me, like, you're like... This is all I did. This is what yeah, I did. you're like, I'll put my toes, I couldn't get out to the side. I was, just, I was just pinching here and trying, and doing knee on the thigh, not throwing leg on the thigh, because it's the same idea, right? If I throw a leg on the thigh, you know, he can, he can go into a leg slip. But if I throw a knee on the thigh, it makes it a lot harder. You know, he's gonna have to reach back, grab ankle, throw it over, you know, all sorts of stuff. And then I can just switch sides again, stay behind the arms, <coughs> try to race, you know, whatever ride time he had. And, <coughs> and really it's just like a, a met, it's, top bottom wrestling is mental warfare, right? It really is mental warfare. So when you have a, when you have a guy who's so used to it, to try to get him out of his comfort zone is hugely important, right? If I'm coaching and, you know, I know a guy's really good on the mat, my goal is to ride that guy as long as I can. Like if I were to coach against whoever, Bo Nickel, Miles Martin, it's like break them down on, on top just so they can't do anything. They feel like they're wasting time. And that kind of emotional, emotional taxation is, is what can win matches for sure. After Dave had won his Hodge Trophy, his first Hodge Trophy, and then we were going to wrestle, it was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, kind of see you out there. And then after that, it was kind of like radio silence for a while. Here we go, a rematch of the NCAA Finals this year. It was 5-4 there. Razor thin. David Taylor putting his anklets on. Kyle Dake pacing back and forth. They're going to be center mat. And here we go, underway 74 kilograms challenge tournament finals in the red. David Taylor in the blue. Kyle Dake for the right to take on Jordan Burroughs. They both wrestled internationally in November with not particularly great results up at 86. They're making and the adjustment. Quickly. It's definitely a lot easier to be friends when you're not competing against each other. The competition is good and it definitely grows you as a competitor. You know, I think, you know, competition is what grows us just in general and our personalities and things. I think it's great to have that. But in wrestling, it's so challenging because we were competing for the exact same thing. It wasn't like, you know, okay, I want to be a national champ at one weight, he's going to be a national champ at another weight. It was like, okay, only one person can be a national champ, only one person's not. Only one person can move on from this match, and one person can. Kyle Stake, yes, he said, seven in a row over David Taylor. There wasn't ever, like, there's some times where I think people are like, man, I hope that guy doesn't win, or, you know, whatever it is. There was never a time in my career where I'm like, I hope Dave doesn't win. Because a lot of times he's on the other side of the bracket and I was like, we gotta wrestle again. When you have someone specifically that's like right there all the time, it's, it's, uh, it just, it just, it's a challenging thing. There was no time in a bracket if we were on opposite sides, it was just like, there was no other route, but we had to go through each other to get to Jordan. I would never be the wrestler I am today without Kyle. It's the adversity, it's the times that I didn't win. Yes, there was tension, but there wasn't because we were always in the same group, always in the same group of friends. You know, going out to eat together, hanging out, playing cards. You know, poker was always competitive. So, like, you know, any time that we were in a hand together, I refused to fold, <laughs> and I would try and bluff him every time. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. <laughs> Usually, it wouldn't. I think you know when, when it really kind of flipped the switch was when we were in Paris in January. First tournament, 74 kilos. You know, I wrestled the club's cup earlier that year. Paris was where I kind of really kind of put my foot on the pedal. 86, you know, I'm sorry, I kind of really 
get moving forward in that direction. Yeah, that that Paris trip was was probably the the time just because I didn't you know I didn't have anybody out there, and you know I was wrestling Alex in the finals. I'd wrestled like 18 other Americans in that tournament. I was like, hey Dave, you want to warm up? I mean, because you know we were the only ones that were wrestling. And I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go. I hit one takedown and it was like so fast and like really strong on Dave. I was like, I'm good. I'm ready to rock and roll. Pretty much stopped right after that. Yeah, I think it, it, it brought back. He's like, well, I'm, you know, Dave, I gotta feel really good, and there was no excuse for him to like uh, to feel sorry for himself or something, you know. You know, and I think that was kind of the, the starting of it. You know, it was nothing like official, but it was like, all right, this is good, you know. And uh, you know, he had a great tournament in Paris. I have to say, it's probably because of my warm up with him. You know, it gave him really just that that you know, because he hadn't wrestled in a while, you know. And I think that was kind of like the, all right, yeah, I do feel really good. I had this really good warm up, Dave. And, uh, you know, I, I feel good. He went out and wrestled like a beast. You know, I'd say after Paris was the first time we texted, like, hey, let's get together and train. Well, the cool thing is that we have so much in common. Like all wrestlers at this elite level have so much in common. In particular, Dave and I have more in common than the rest of the senior level athletes. The, you know, the way we approach our lives. You know, I think I lacked a little bit of that like toughness, you know, in, the, in, the, in that time period. You know, when things got hard, I didn't really find a way to win. And uh, he is so good at finding a way. Learning from that, right? Learning from him and how he he, he is able to do that. It was, I mean, it was really easy. I would say the easiest thing. I mean, we just remove the the friction or whatever you want to call it, and I think that's what has really changed my wrestling. To drop everything, it wasn't it wasn't that difficult for me, you know. It was just like, oh sweet, I got I got a new training partner. I got Dave to, you know, push me. You stepped right over to me, right? Yeah, but I didn't want to. My hips up because you're gonna put me through. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to keep my hips down and keeping your foot off in that until stepping over. I think that was probably the beginning of kind of the rekindling of moving forward on the same page together. You know, we train at World Clubs Cup, we're together there. You're regain. First day there, we're training together. World Cup, Turkey, so it's good. You know, I think it's great to, we, we both have good training situations at, at our homes, but it's great when you can change it up a little bit too. He really pushed me to, to grow as a wrestler. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Yeah, good workout. Dinner? Sounds good. Let's go. So besides tech falling everybody and then pinning us down in the finals. I mean, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but uh, think of the match, man. I am really excited to wrestle Budapest. So. I'm excited for everyone to wrestle. Yeah. Like I, I just, I just see the guys that we have, <clears> and uh, I mean. It's so fun to talk about potential, mm -hmm. but I mean, I think just we have guys that are just really talented that have had experience. You know, even when we have an experience world championships, and we've had a lot of international experience wrestling yeah. the best guys. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that I think that factors in, and we wrestle big matches our whole lives. You know, yeah. so like anytime we have a tournament like this, I partially want to fanboy out and just be like, watch good yeah. wrestling. Uh, other parts I'm like, not. I just want to rip somebody's head off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are live. We're inside Rec Hall on the campus of Penn State for Final X. Come and tear their feet, the loudest I've heard. So, so Final X, you know, this is in, in Dave's home gym. You know, you could feel you could feel how excited he was to, to compete in front of the 
the Penn State fans again. You know, I was I was texting Dave trying to find all like the where the VIP stuff was. And I was like, hey, like, where, what are you doing? Where are you hanging out after weigh-in? It's like, where, where can you go? Oh yeah, you could probably just hang out in the wrestling room. And Dave, you know, Dave had this royal, royal welcoming party afterwards up in the locker room. You know, he was just living like a king, and I was, you know, some sort of peasant. Penn State wrestling has this like nice locker room, and once you graduate, you know, you get stuck in this like old man locker room. <laughs> then nine wrestling club guys, we got these like crappy lockers. You know, like Coach Kale's always stealing my loop. You know, so with, this was the opportunity to go sit. You know, they got it nice in there. You know, they got a nice room. They got this like chair. They got video games. Well, yeah, I now realize that when you asked me, and I, I did was like, oh, I think you can hang out in the wrestling room. Probably should invite him into the into the locker room. But I don't know. I didn't know what the. Must be nice. I know the etiquette was going to be there. Must be nice. tough match. I had to be prepared and mentally focused. I couldn't really get caught up in the show of it. After my first match, I wrestled before before Dave, so after my first match I went back and you know just put my feet up, finished my cool down, and, and got ready for for one more match. And and then I was like, alright, we gotta go again. So then you know I had my second match. And here comes the man, Kyle Dake, up to the stage. He's a match away from making the world team. historic moment. In State College, wrestling is important here, you know, and it's exciting that the people that followed have the, have the opportunity to, to be there, to be involved, you know, to relive those moments that we had in dual meets and uh, the big matches and the excitement that we shared, you know, being a part of the Penn State team. After that, it was, you know, anti-doping, interviews, you know, going, going to say hi to my family, and then, you know, the crowd erupts. <laughs> volumes to be able to be positions that we are in you know, and to be able to share these moments together because a lot of people don't do that and a lot of people it just at this level it's very selfish you know it's and I think you have to be to be the best in the world you have to be selfish with your time it's really important you know I just saw Dave and he was getting his interview and I, I got my phone out and I started interviewing Dave too and it was just being knuckleheads just like always and you know say congratulations and that was great I remember that night just Celebrating with my friends and my family, um, my coaches, you know, just like it was a great, it was a really great memory, you know, a great, exciting time. But by no means is this the end goal, but it was good to finally break through to do it at home. I think I might have said about damn time or yeah. something like that, you know, because it's been a long time coming. You know, again, it's a frustrating time, you know, it's frustrating, you know, coming up short for a period of time. You know, still have come up short, you know, still, still haven't really achieved what I want to achieve. But I have this like burning hunger and desire stronger than ever in my life. It's crazy to think about how like, you know, 15 years ago, we're sitting, sitting in the basement, chilling out. And now we're got our own houses, own families, getting ready to go take over the world. Kind of sick now. It's weird to think about. It just brought back nostalgia, just talking about it. Yeah. It was just, <clears throat> just memories that are fun to, fun to think about. <clears throat> well, big gulps. Guess we gotta order. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> just order some <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and I think we're almost at a good stop point. Um, yeah, I think it's so what if there could be some kind of last and cheers of water or something, just like you know, say these words, but the idea I'm thinking is like to to a gold medal. Something Budapest, Tokyo, and beyond. I don't know. That maybe that's cheesy, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said what I'm saying. Myself cheesy, but I'm trying to think of a way to just wrap this.
Well, I, I think I, I got a little too excited. Like, I celebrated too early, you know, after the semis match. And after that, that's how I imagined I probably would have felt. But, you know, I tried to, tried to stay cool, just clap my hands, and I saw the crowd and got really pumped up. And then after I won, it was kind of like, wow, you did it. Like, good job. You got the, you got the get it up, get it up! Denver. I cried in the national anthem. Obviously, think about it all the time. Stepping up there, the gold medal around your neck, and when the flag was raised and the national anthem started, you know, I started tearing up. It's just, a, it's just a pretty special thing, and that flag represents so many things. You know, it represents our freedom, it represents the people who have sacrificed and died for us to be able to do what we're doing. We're just doing a game. You know, we're just trying to do what we love to do. You know, so just to have that opportunity to even be here, to stay on the thing, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And the last. The last minute of it, I could just enjoy it. You know, just the, the, the smiles and the enjoyment of soaking it in and being a world champ. It's awesome. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah. <laughs> we should do this again around, around the same time next year in Kazakhstan. You know, just keep keep the ball rolling. It's, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, we got a slower start to our international career than what we believed we had, but mm -hmm. now it's started. You know, we're here and uh, I don't have any intention to go anywhere. So it's an exciting time and I'm hungry. I'm already hungry for to continue to get better for the next one. I think it's just cool how we got here. You know, it's like we had the same trajectory from when we were younger. It's a long time, you know, and uh, there's just not many kids, you know, elementary, junior high, you know, even high school, college. Yeah. You know, you're like, man, this, these guys are on the path to do great things, you know? And then you think about those people and you're like, well, are, what happened to them? That you would think, yeah, this guy's gonna translate to freestyle great. He's gonna do these different things, you know? And, you know, we, at different times in our careers, you know, it was like we were, like, we're shoot in to, to have this success. Success is hard. You know, for us to come out where we are and to win a world championship at the same time is pretty cool. Really cool. We made Sports Center. Sick. have such you know similar paths in, in the sense that we've been clawing and, and fighting through the nail to get to where we want to be and, and to finally push through on the same day you know basically at the same exact time you know in the same way it was really special I think that both right now 79 kilos and 86 kilos we both are wrestling the best that we've ever wrestled in our careers and I confidently can say it's from our friendship rivalry competition throughout the years and now as teammates, you know, and wrestling more often, I believe that's a big factor. Long, strange trip it's been. Anything else, guys? Anything else you want to say before we shut it down? Thanks, Megan. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Kendra. Thanks, Kendra. Oh, he went first. He went first, so that's hard for me to go after that. Thanks, babe.